this lower gasket all cleaned up here. This took probably an hour and a half actually. Um, that gasket was baked on there. It was definitely the OEM because there was a part missing by the timing chain that was gooped up with some RTV. So yeah, the, I used a razor blade and uh, tried the wire wheel on the Dremel. You're not really supposed to do that because it can shoot the wires into the engine. Um, so I tried to hold the shop back next to it. but That is the flattest I can get it. Um, I used acetone to clean it up as well. Try to loosen that gasket. It was baked on. So now you can see I have all these little ridges in here. Um, I'm going to actually, because of that, use uh, RTV uh, underneath and on top of the gasket for this portion of the uh, case. And this is the uh, lower portion that the cylinder attaches to. So, uh, I'm going to get some RTV and we'll pull those rings off. I did buy new rings. Um, I'm going to keep the piston and uh, put new rings on and we'll hone out the cylinder. And we'll make sure this is all clean and put RTV on that and start rebuilding this thing. Alright, here's all the uh, materials I've gotten. So we got our new gasket kit uh, from eBay. We have uh, our oil filter. I did buy OEM Yamaha piston rings. Again, off eBay, like 30 bucks. Got some instructions from online on uh, making sure we measure our uh, piston ring gap and, and some other um, measurements we need to take. Uh, valve grinding compound and valve lapper tool. I might not pull out the valves because of that the way that gasket was and it being so hard, um, I do have a feeling that that might have been what was causing the no compression. Um, we still have to clean up the other surface too to uh, make sure that we get a good seal on that as well. But just from eyeballing that, I'm guessing that's what's what the problem is. And um, as far as the piston ring, uh, I think I'm just going to change those while we're in here. Um, it's one of those things like if it's not broken, don't fix it, but I don't know. Uh, and these are piston ring installing and removing tools. They grab the ends of the piston rings, and then we have a cylinder hone uh, as well to just kind of quickly cross hatch that uh, cylinder. It's in good shape, but. Uh, Nothing wrong with scuffing it up a little bit so you get a little more compression. It gets a little more grab. Basically, it breaks that glaze off it. So, let's get to work. Acetone works really well for cleaning up all those gummy surfaces there. Alright, so we're going to give a shot at uh, removing the glaze in the cylinder. It's in pretty good shape. Um, it does have some surface rust from sitting and where the rings were sat. But if you look, it's it's glazed, meaning that it doesn't have any any cross hatch. Basically, if you picture like sandpaper uh, and they're giving it some grit, that actually adds compression and holds oil. Uh, and the oil rides on the piston rings on the walls of the cylinder and that actually seals it and gives it you know a good compression uh, so we actually want to add some grit to this despite what you would think so we have our hone here and we're gonna add um, some oil just some engine oil to lubricate this and we're gonna just run it around the piston walls here Oops. Get that all nice and lubricated. You can put it on the stones too. And uh, this particular hone is just a cheapie, but uh, you can adjust the tension here and that'll push out further. We have a pretty um, small bore here, obviously. It's for a, uh, you know, a quad. So we don't need to worry. 
about that. And what we're gonna do is put it on a low speed and move up and down and get this glaze broken up. So here we go. Again, we're not trying to change the a diameter here, although we are very slightly, and the piston rings will account for that. But we're trying to hatch it now. I can see right now I'm spinning a little too fast. I need to go up and down a bit more. It's very important when you're done with this to really clean it. Get all that grit out of there. There we go. That really broke the glaze down there. I think my stones just needed broken in. This here is a oil passageway to reach the head of your engine. We're gonna spray some carb cleaner in there, make sure it's all cleaned out. Now, the question always comes is, how clean do I need to get this? Well, basically, you don't, you want to be able to stick a rag in and not have it dirty at all when it comes back out, so that's how you know. And really, honestly, you should be using like lint-free rags. Um, I am not, because I don't have any. There we go, that's, uh, that's pretty clean. And last step, we're just going to throw some oil on the walls, clean oil. Alright, now we've got the, well, I can't think of what it's called, head of the engine. And we've got some crap on here, let's, uh, See if that's gonna come off or how it's gonna come off. Let's try some acetone. All right, now some of this carbon in here. Let's see if we can let that carb cleaner soak on that a little bit. It will come off. All right, we're gonna put new rings on this just because. And uh, when you put them on, uh, there's a certain mark you want to um, make sure two things one the manufacturers marks are on the top side of the rings and then you want to uh, uh, make sure you offset them in this pattern so your top ring is uh, 25 degrees that way your oil rings that way second rings that way and your bottom oil rings that way. So let's do this. This is going to be tough doing it with the piston in there. I'm going to see if I can. So, all right, let's see if we can get this top ring off. See if they put the manufacturer's marks up. And it says, before installing, add a liberal amount of oil. So that's what we're going to do. All 
right, so my bottom oil ring rail, I want it to be facing this direction. Must be an aftermarket piston, I just assumed it was OEM. That is not good. That was a waste of money. Fuck. <sighs> Shit. Okay, let's try this again. We're gonna put oil ring on first. Get it in there. Yep. Okay, so the OEM doesn't fit, so we're putting the old one back on. This was a waste of time and money. Hopefully we don't have ring issues. I guess we're just gonna, I'm definitely gonna check the clearance now. <sighs> that sucks. Makes sense though. Let's see if the top OEM one fits. Nope. That really sucks. Okay. Moving on. acetone again get that oil off real good we want the RTV to stick really nice oh yeah so we're gonna use RTV because the gasket surface is really scored and my gasket kit came with a ripped um, the casket for this spot is ripped of course right uh, it should be fine because we're going to gunk it up with uh, some high temp silicone. And I've done that before on cases and it never had an issue. We do want to change this O-ring here. We can't forget about that for our oil passage. And we're going to have to fish all that stuff through. And we cannot forget the other timing chain guide. So don't let me forget about that, guys. Okay, so again, my gasket ripped, we're going to use RTV, and let's just check that the gasket does fit first, before we gunk it all up, stay. Yep. So this stuff is uh, called RTV, Room Temperature Vulcanizer. It means it's a rubber that sets up in a gasket, right, at room temperature. It doesn't need high temperature cure or anything like that. I'm not a rubber expert, but that is what RTV stands for, if you're wondering. And that's why it's excellent gasket maker as well. If you're gonna do this, use the red stuff. It's uh, it's so much better, and you don't need a lot. Everyone gunks it up like crazy when the when the uh, head goes on and compresses it will spread it out so we just want even coverage not too thick not too thin you've done this a few times you kinda get a good feel for it but again once the gasket goes on and what we're gonna do is um, put the head on by the time we get that far this stuff will start to set up and uh, you want it to set up before you fully torque it down. I 
This is going to be tricky. Got to get the piston rings to compress. First one. Gotta pull this timing chain through. So I screwed up. <clears throat> I forgot that uh, O-ring underneath the uh, lower cylinder where it goes into the head. But we're going to do something that uh, probably shouldn't do. But I'm going to torque the head down so that gasket we put on, the gasket maker, so it sinks in. I got the torque spec and there's a tightening sequence on this engine. It's uh, the head bolts are 29 foot pounds. Okay, and then these bolts are 14. And the sequence is you want to do one, two, three, four, five, six at 29 foot pounds. So let's get that. Now that you notice that didn't click, that's okay, that's because um, I'm letting it tighten down evenly, so I'm just going to feel it by hand. And uh, the reason I'm doing this, instead of going back and getting that o-ring, is one, I want that gasket to form down there. Two. I pretty much want to see, I want to problem solve what's going to happen here. Because I'm not sure if we have a valve issue or what that's causing the low compression. So, Okay, so our head's torqued down. Everything looks good. Now we're going to uh, set our timing. And I really should take this off. Um, Okay, we cannot drop this in there. So, let's take our time. We are on. Okay. 
Alright, that torque spec is 43 foot pounds. I don't know if we're going to get it though. Might just have to use the impact. Alright, so I put this back together without lapping the valves in and with the old piston rings. Hoping it was just like a head gasket. Ran it 30 pounds pressure. It's supposed to be like, I forget, 120 or 160 or something. We're still way off, so we're going to put this back on TDC and pull it all apart again. This time I won't forget that O-ring. And we're going to lap the valves in properly. So let's do it again. All right, so we've got to pull out these rocker arms. The uh, shaft for them is located here and here. It's threaded, it's metric, it's a metric 6 1.0 and these are at Home Depot 60 millimeters are the longest ones you can get and so what we're going to do is uh, put a plate here and try to jack them out that way. I'm going to put two washers on here to kind of act like a thrust bearing. Give us a little spin on there. And I got some other plans if this doesn't work, but we'll see if it pulls it out. Oh, I see what's happening. Yeah. Okay, we're going to plan B already. It's bottoming out in the thing. Let's see if I have a die run on this to give me more threads. You can see that. So I don't have a metric tap or die to put on there, so I'm just gonna keep adding washers until I bottom out. Right there. And so that pulled it out a little bit further. I'll back it off. Now I think this has O-rings on it. And I don't know if my kit came with them. I have a top end kit. It did come with a bunch of O-rings, but they didn't say what they were for. That's a little confusing. There. And pull out, hopefully. Ah, oh, it's riding on the camshaft. Oh, got it. Okay, so this is called your rocker arm. And I'm going to make sure I keep them on the right side. So this is exhaust. Exhaust. All right, now we have access to our spring, which I'm going to see if this thing fits. I have some other tricks if it doesn't. You know what? I might do that before. I might pull the spring out before I... Because the camshaft lobes look okay, so. And that O-ring looks in good shape on the uh, shaft, so. Well, I guess let's see if this will fit in there. I don't think it will. Shit. 
I don't think this head comes apart anymore. I don't know if you guys could see this, but I think I just found our compression issue. If you look down through there, you can see a slight ring. That is the valve not fully seated, which would, you know, cause the loose compression. So hopefully it's not bent. I don't think I can spin it yet. Nope. And it's just crud, and it just needs lapped in. So, that's what I'm guessing. I'm going to try to get some of that uh, crap out of there, too, and change that gasket. Yeah, of course you can't compress those by hand. I saw people put vice grips on these, uh, which I might have to do if this doesn't... Stupid. All right, so here's the plan. I got this uh, socket. It's actually a nice one, but I don't have anything else. So we're going to grind out basically a passageway here and stick a magnet in there to pull the two keepers out that surround the, uh, the actual shaft of the valve. And we'll compress the spring by putting it here and on the other end of the valve. Um, and I'll probably put a socket on there or something and we'll compress it like this and then stick our magnet in and pull those keepers out. So let's grind up this perfectly good Craftsman 19 millimeter socket. All right. Let's see if we can mess this up. Uh, all right, I'm gonna buy that tool. There were a bunch of cheap spring compressors on Amazon. Um, I was reading all the reviews. They all, they're like 20 bucks, 30 bucks. And all of them said that they bent here in the shaft. So I went with this one. I'll put a link in the description. It was like 55 bucks, which is more than I wanted to spend, obviously. But uh, this thing's pretty, pretty awesome. Let's see. That is working awesome. Definitely worth it. Alright guys. We are in business. So here's the game plan now, okay? I'm going to try to clean this up a little bit. The seat, my thought is that this valve is not seating properly, so... That one had an orange on the top. It's interesting. So the timing must have been off. That's what I suspected, actually, when I was first tearing into the timing belt, the timing chain. It seemed like something was weird. It was like advanced a half tooth. So I think the chain might have stretched. So I think I, I should really probably buy a new chain and um, compressor.
than before. Shit, that valve might be slightly bent too. Hold on. Oh, this might be bent. If you can see, it only hit half of it. Okay, let's try this again. Yep. Shit. See that? Contact patch, that's the low spot. So we know that our exhaust valve is bent, so I think I'm just gonna buy new ones. Let's pull off the intake. The intake valve and we'll check that one. If it's good, we can lap it in. All right, we're pulling out the intake side now, same as the uh, exhaust. So I just found a pretty good method to getting these um, keepers out. The I thread my bolt in and I have this and I'm basically like holding the weight of it like this and then I back it out it pulls it right out it kind of spins the uh, body in there but actually I have it stuck so I'm gonna have to use an impact to get that off of there so that's no problem though let's pull this out that is intake so let's keep that with intake Always, 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 always. All right. All right, this, this is gonna be a little crazy. Basically, I'm trying to make some soft jaws because I got that stuck. So I'm gonna bend these down. I don't wanna mar that surface with the vice grip, so that's why I'm doing this. I just got a copper pipe. And I'm definitely not going to do it where the journal is. Got it. Mm, this one's definitely a little more stuck. Probably gonna pop. I might need to tap it to free it up. Let's see. There it is. That's why you wear your safety glasses, boys and girls. Sometimes those keepers just get so seated. You know, they're they're locked in there. This tool is awesome. This is worth it. Just for that. This won't be the last quad I work on, so. Okay. Keep these in the same. That one had orange on the top. It's interesting. I guess you're supposed to soak these. Some people use a wire wheel, but if this one's good, we don't want to bend it. This quad was definitely ridden, put away, wet, whatever they say. Ridden hard. There, we're going to do our dykem. I think I want to do it on the case this time. Push it on there. Oh, very nice. 
there's one spot you guys can see that let's see right there it's just slightly not grabbing so let's lap it in see if we can get rid of that hopefully this one laps correctly now because uh, <laughs> that exhaust valve was so bent I should have looked at it before I tried lapping it hopefully this tool works now too I've always seen people go like this, but I can't even... It won't suck, even if I clean it all off. The other thing, you don't want misleading information, so you want to put on that seat you want a full ring of dicum. Make sure you don't skimp on that there because then it'll tell you you're not seated. I don't think I really have to push on it like that. It just makes me feel better. Huh. Interesting. Kind of see half of it. I don't have a contact patch. Son of a... Alright, I'm gonna go see how much just a new set of valves cost. <laughs> I think you have to lap those in too because the seat, you know. But that one's, I don't know. Alright, we're back again. Thanks to eBay, I got a new set of valves aftermarket. They're not OEM. Um, I was reading online that you don't have to lap these in. They look pretty good. I haven't seen if they even fit yet. Probably throw some oil on that real quick before I run it in there. The exhaust valve, I think it was um, $29. Yeah, they look straight. People sell used ones on there, but I just can't trust that, I don't know. So I have this assembly lube and I think I do want to just use some Dicom and just check. Um, just check these. This assembly lube is great. It's really sticky so it um, it's almost like chainsaw bar oil. You could probably actually use that, I'm not sure. But let's just get that lined up. Nice. That fits nice. I think I'm going to pull them out. And uh, since we did kind of lap the old ones in, which maybe is a good technique. Uh, the the surface here should actually be well it might not be fully concentric because we were lapping with like a bent rod so that might be a little bit concerning um, yeah it won't hurt anything let's throw some dicum on there and let's just see where our seat is full ring on there let's check the other one this is just comforting and knowing that I don't have to tear this apart again and that our, uh, you know, we have a good seat and a good seal. I'm not spinning it around either. I'm trying to keep it just flat. Yeah, I'm actually losing contact in that top corner just slightly. Let's see, which one was bent? Yeah, it was that one and that's where we lapped in so it's could be bad news I might have to relap this fresh one in get this really saturated up there I'm gonna spin this valve around too 
Yeah, same spot, this like top corner. It could be dented or it could be from lapping. Uh, so, do we lap it? I think we do. Because um, if I lose compression in that top corner, because I lapped it in with the bent valve, that'd be bad. So, I'm gonna wipe this all down. Oh, of course, it doesn't fit in that chuck. That is so much easier. Okay, let's do the Dicom test again. Let's see if that did anything. I don't want. To, I didn't want to do too much because um, I don't know if there's actually a coating on there. I don't know. Same thing, man. I don't know. Let me try. If it is gravity, which is possible that's pulling the dicum down. You know, I'm putting it on like super wet. I think the head is toast. All right, I've decided to put this back together. So I just pulled the old exhaust um, gasket out. And now I'm going, and I cleaned everything out with carb cleaner. And so now I can get my new valves. There's some assembly lube on them and I'm going to compress it, put the valves back in. This uh, Ultra Slick by Permatex is really nice because it's sticky. It'll hold those valves in there actually. Alright, safety glasses now. We're gonna go into the world of Getting the valve springs on and getting the keepers in place, which is a game in itself. So, see if we can not lose an eyeball here. And our spring compressor. What? All right, I got the uh, valve seats in. Now we're going to run these back in until I get to, don't forget to put this in. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit of assembly lube on that too. It's really tight. Wish I had a vice. Probably be easier to do this with the cam out. But for some reason I didn't want to take it out, so. Come on. This is not a job to do when you're frustrated about life or anything in that matter. Or in the cold. Really hard to get these lined up. There you go, got one. be pretty close. I feel like they should have more of a tapered end on them. 
Yes, number two's in. And I just smashed the case because I'm rushing for some stupid reason. Crankshaft still spin, yep. They have to go a lot further in because that head bolt needs to go there. So let's tap it with a aluminum screwdriver. I don't know why this one's tighter. I made sure they were on the same side. Okay, now I'm going to get some blue Loctite. Um, for these keepers. And this is like spring loaded. And it had two bent over tabs. And technically when you get into like bolt holding strength, um, there's actually calculations for oil on threads and certain applications require that actually for like high-speed machinery and other things so um, basically if you're using Loctite which this I am going to because it holds the main camshaft on um, this stuff's awesome by the way it's a twist gel. I like it way better than the liquid. Just need a little bit on there too. And I should have bought the manual, but I don't have the torque spec, but you get a feel for it. Um, and on this one, it has two tabs you fold over. This is into aluminum again. I have strip bolts in aluminum, and it is not fun. Then we're going to bend this tab up, so I probably should have pre-bent it. Yep. 
chug. Yeah, I think it's just running off the fluid. Sometimes it vibrates, it'll shake it free. So we got it to run off carb cleaner, which is um, great. That means we have compression now, and it means that the valves are functioning as they should. Uh, I'll probably go back in and just check the valve lash once I run it a little bit and heat it up. But uh, we need to get the carburetor situated right now. And there was a problem with that because it, all the uh, nuts in there were like solid. They were, they were solid. So I guess I'm going to have to put heat to it, which is a little dangerous because, um, you know, carbs typically have high tolerances and there's like gas potentially in there. But let's uh, pull it apart and see if we can't get those, those bolts off again. Um, this thing still is a long way from riding it. Uh, there's still a ton of work. We haven't even gone into the chain or the brakes or the tires. Um, the control arms are real sloppy so this is going to be a long series of fixing that. I've got to weld the muffler I've got to weld uh, a front engine mount that was non-existent so yeah let's uh, pull the carb off see if it'll actually run. Oh and we got to make a nice rear bumper too because that broke off and none of the lights work <clears throat> 